and welcome back. You're still watching Markets Today on CNBC TV 18. Now, today was a quiet day, choppy, uh, but quiet by the end of it. So, we gave up a lot of our gains uh, at the fag end of trade. And you got a sense that now defensives are picking up. So, today you had uh, the FMCG stocks like ITC, HUL do well. You had some of the technology names like TCS do well. And then names like Asian Paints, etc. also picked up. But all in all, a bit of a rocky start, but still holding on to our gains from last week. But time now for some technical perspective. Sudarshan Sukhani joins in for that. Sudarshan, the Lal Street lost momentum in the last half hour of trade, but um, what's the prognosis uh, for Wednesday? Well, we had a rather choppy day in the markets and uh, the Nifty was uh, flat, but much more important for me was the Bank Nifty's sharp underperformance. And there was a big slide in the morning and which continued till the closing. And the message then is that these are just days that will occur in any uptrend. One day of decline or even more than one day is not a cause for worry. So the bank nifty has been choppy in any case, but I would expect the banks to sooner or later recover and match up with the nifty. So with this view, uh, I continue to remain upbeat. The markets are within striking distance of 9,000 and making lifetime new highs. It's reasonable to expect that this could happen before the budget comes in. So stay long, that's my suggestion. If you're not long, buy on dips like today, or even when you have a small soft opening or a softening of prices during the day, keep buy, uh, buy and maintain a long position. Uh, there are no stops as such, but for people who still want to look at stops, your stops are 8,600. So far as the Nifty is above 8,600, we want to be on the long side of the market in all the three indices, the IT, banks, as well as the main Nifty. All right, so Darshan, that's the market. Uh, what about individual stocks? What are you betting on for the rest of this week? Well, a lot of blue chip stocks keep on giving buying opportunities. One of them is HCL Tech. So for Wednesday, remember tomorrow is a holiday. So for Wednesday, I would suggest buying HCL Tech. The stock has been on a tear, rallying uh, almost non-stop. And then for the last two days, there has been a pause. So a pause is a good time to enter a share which is uh, going through a big rally and uh, consider buying HCL Tech, it's a blue chip anyway. So the risks are relatively small, uh, but uh, markets can be choppy, so please follow your stops. All right, Sudarshan, thanks for that. Uh, well, uh, moving on from micros to the macros, the chorus for more rate cuts from the RBI seems to get louder. Wholesale prices in India have entered the deflation zone. In fact, the wholesale price index in January has contracted by 0.39%. This is well below a CNBC TV18 poll and the 0.11% that was clocked in December of last year. But this data is sending mixed signals to the RBI. Here's why. While fuel prices drop by over 10%, food prices have actually seen a sharp rise accelerating to 8%. Ekta is here to give us the analysis. Ekta. Well, it was definitely a surprise on the downside for the WPI data for the month of January. It declined 0.4% versus an expectation of a rise of 0.15% and versus 0.11% rise in the previous month. In fact, it was the lowest figure that we've seen since June 2009 with core inflation declining sub 1% at 0.88% and the November WPI inflation being revised lower to 0.1% decline as well. The decline this month, however, was uh, fairly broad-based with few inflation seeing a further decline of over 10.5% for the month. Manufactured products inflation also came in at a 1.05% at a, a figure versus 1.57% month on month. However, the only thing was that the food articles inflation saw a bit of a spike up on a month on month basis. It came in at 8% versus 5.2% on a month on month basis with the rise primarily being because of vegetables, pulses as well as fruits. All of them seeing double digit inflation and the favorable base effect that we saw since August to November, now wearing off for the months of December as well as January. Now, what are economists saying with the WPI data? That it is not going to be something that will make the economists change their expectations or simply because CPI is the nominal anchor, but the WPI for January data definitely provides additional support to the theory that the RBI will be more accommodative than earlier anticipated and before the January CPI data on a revised base had come out. Uh, what is the trend of uh, the November WPI data being revised downward tell you the fact that the downward inflation pressure is now firmly re retrenched in, uh, within the economy. 
All right, Ekta, thanks so much for the ad that analysis. Now let's get some opinion going. What experts are making of this WPI data that's come in today? The risks are to the downside because if oil prices uh, stay very low, you could see inflation to be even lower. I think the WPI at this moment is at best a supporting evidence towards this inflation decline. Uh, I don't think there is a, any kind of a lead lag going on here between WPI and CPI, which will worry RBI. So at this point, uh, looking at about a 75 basis point of rate cut uh, over uh, the next few uh, policies. We're still sticking to our additional 50 to 75 basis from now on. Uh, and simply because uh, I think the 1.5 to 2% real rate uh, uh, that the RBI is looking at gels in uh, with the 50 to 75. So based on the WPI, which we were anyways expecting to go down into the negative territory, uh, and having also looked at the CPI, we have not really changed our forecasts uh, uh, on the rate cutting cycle, the extent and the depth uh, of the rate cutting cycle of the Reserve Bank of India. All right, that's the analysis on the macro data, but a number of stocks were buzzing in trade today on the back of their quarterly earnings and brokerage upgrades. Let's go across to Mangalam Malu for a quick wrap. Mangalam. Among a whole host of stocks that were in focus today, first off we have HDIL. Now this one hit a fresh 52-week high today on the back of strong earnings. The profit came up by about 13 times last year. The management spoke to CNBC TV 18 this morning and they expect the debt to go, by, go down by about 600 crore rupees. Unitech was another stock which was high up in trade today on the back of great earnings. Their profits went up by 32% year on year. And this was on the back of a big fall in their interest expense. Mahindra, Mahindra was a stock, another, another stock in focus today as the company proposes to invest about 4,000 crores to set up a large trading facility in Tamil Nadu for the company's future models in cars. Reliance Communications was in focus today as well as the management spoke to CNBC TV 18. They hope to bring down the net debt to three times EBITDA versus five times what it is currently. CESC was down in trade today as well as the company bid aggressively for their Sarissa Toli uh, coal block mine and the company the price for the stock also dipped below its 200 daily moving average sun pharma was another stock which was down in trade today on the back of weak results that u.s business declined by about 20 percent though credit suez maintains its outperformed rating it's cut its fy15 estimates by about four percent on the eps cox and kings on the other hand uh, reported a good set of numbers on friday on the back of which edelweiss maintains its buy target and has revised its revised its target price from 381 to 438 rupees. The management again spoke to CNBC TV 18 this morning and they said that they expect the India operations EBITDA to grow at 20% in FY16. And finally, SR shipping was down in trade today on the back of poor numbers as their losses expand and their margins also dip significantly. Remember, their EBITDA came down by 36%. These are the stocks in focus today. Over to you. All right, Mankalam, thanks so much for that. Well, before we go, let's now hear out Krish Subramaniam of Asset Sea Mehta Investments with his top trading ideas. Today's session saw some uh, profit taking the markets after uh, four days of uh, strong rise uh, last week. And uh, we also saw some uh, long unwinding coming about in some of the counters which uh, uh, had seen some uh, uh, built up last week. But we feel that the momentum uh, still remains positive and keeping that in mind, uh, we are giving uh, a bull spread strategy in SBI. Now SBI saw some uh, uh, superb uh, long built up last week. and. Uh, it also saw some very strong put writing in the 290 and the 300 uh, puts put strike and also in today we also saw some additions in the 310 puts. So we feel the momentum is strong. So one could go and buy 300 strike, uh, uh, FIP 300 strike call at around 14 rupees and correspondingly sell a FIP uh, 325 strike call at around 4. So the net cost comes to about 10 rupees. So one could keep a target of uh, 20 and a stop loss of 6. Uh, second recommendation is a covered call strategy in Biocon. Now, we did see some uh, hectic short covering in that counter uh, on Friday. And today, uh, the counter saw some cooling off. But uh, closer to levels of 430, we feel that uh, we should see some sort of buying emerging again. Uh, keeping that in mind, we are giving a covered call strategy wherein one could buy a FIB uh, features for at around 435, 440. And correspondingly, sell a 440 strike call at around 10 rupees. We could keep a target of uh, 460 and a stop loss of 420. All right, with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Markets Today. You guys have a good evening. We'll see you again tomorrow morning.
on uh, Wednesday. On unless Wednesday unless Sonia is coming in tomorrow. <laughs> on Wednesday morning. Yes, happy holidays. <laughs>